Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds. So this is where I like to collect together all the albums that I've purchased over the past week and present them to you. And of course I get it from different places like my local record store, but also online retail like Amazon, eBay, and more. For this particular week, I've got 13 albums to run through with you coming from all different places, touching base on a little bit of all of those ones where I get my stuff. And we'll do that in just a bit here, but before we do, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button please click the button also leave a comment hit like all those things help support my channel i would greatly appreciate it and of course as an added bonus by subscribing you will be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music just like this with an episode of new music finds and so we like to start off with new releases those are always being the most exciting ones the other sort of catalog stuff that i get sometimes to fill you know gaps into my collection and so forth you know that can come a little bit later but we're going to start with new releases. And one of the ones that uh, I was really surprised by that I uh, wasn't too hyped about, Queensryche Digital Noise Alliance, our 16th studio album. This one here really, really impressed me. Um, the last three Toddlatory fronted albums, very good. But this one here, it, to me, is the first one that really has a throwback sound to the 1990 era empire period of the band. And for me at least, that was always an era that I really, really enjoyed. It was a much more hard rock era than a sort of straight ahead metal era, like the earlier periods and stuff like that, and some of what the Todd Tory era was doing early on. So this one here, very much in that vein, both production, songwriting, all that sort of stuff. Have done a full review of it, including an unboxing of this sort of deluxe edition version of it. If you wanna see that whole unboxing of that, uh, do check the link in the description for the full review of this and you'll get to see that. But good album, highly recommended and do uh, think you should check that out. Then another one that, um, again, I didn't have very high hopes on, but totally turned things around after multiple listens. The Cult, Under the Midnight Sun, another one that I have done a full review on, so of course, check the description for a link on that. But this album here, I put it on, listened to it, didn't do much for me. It took several repeated listens. By the time I got into it, maybe the third or fourth time, it really started to grow on me. And I just found that the album itself is a fantastic album, albeit it doesn't sound like any of the other Cult albums in my opinion, but of course, that's part of what the cult have always been. I mean, they really don't have two albums that sound alike. They have some that are, you know, can be very similar or so forth, but most of their albums are very different from one another. And I have always digged that about bands that do that. And this one here is another one just like that. So grew on me after repeated listens. And now I have to say, this album's definitely gonna appear in my top 20 albums for the end of the year come, you know, maybe around December. Usually when I post that, you'll see it. So. I think it's a pretty darn good album. I would highly recommend uh, that one also. And then here's one that I didn't think many people would uh, care about or know about. John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band. It is a greatest hits album. First collection that the band has ever gotten. It has 16 tracks spanning their whole career, which is really cool. All remastered stuff. It's on Iconoclast. So it's on a major label. This is not some small label putting it together and it is all the original studio recordings of the tracks on there. Nothing unreleased, nothing like that. Uh, but if you just want a good collection because all of their albums are out of print, this is where to get it. And if you don't know who John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band are, but you're a fan of Bruce Springsteen, check them out. You'll uh, be glad that you did. Of course, uh, most of you are probably going to remember them from the soundtrack to Eddie and the Cruisers, uh, the first version of that movie on the dark side. They had a huge hit with that top 10 and so forth. And here's what I wasn't planning on buying, but I decided to give it a chance. And again, it ended up really impressing me. Ellison Soto. Um, David Ellison, formerly of Megadeth, and Jeff Scott Soto, who's played with a number of different bands, currently with Sons of Apollo, but has also played with like Yngwie Malmsteen and more. And I have to say, I'm not a big fan of Jeff Scott Soto, so I was a little on the fence about this thing as a whole. I was curious what David Ellison would be doing. But in the end of the day, this album here, the guitar player that's on this thing, who unfortunately doesn't get uh, the name recognition as uh, David Ellison and Jeff Scott Soto, whose both names form the Ellison Soto title to this thing, the guy is amazing and he really blew my mind and the songs that are on here, they, they do a lot of different styles of things. And so instead of it all being 
one particular style. There's a lot of interest in this and really held my, you know, uh, interest through the listening of this. So I would definitely recommend checking this out. It's got 11 tracks plus three bonus tracks for a total of, um, well, you know, interestingly, it says 15 on here and I see there's no 12th track. So I'm gonna have to pop this thing in now and check out if there is a 12th one on there that's just unlisted or what, or whether it's really 14 tracks. I only just noticed that. I've been listening to it, but I wasn't counting the tracks. So I'll check that out after I'm done here. All right, next up, Bush, The Art of Survival, brand new studio album by these guys. I've been a much bigger fan of Bush in the reunion era uh, versus them back in their heyday. Just, they didn't really do it for me back in their heyday. Not that I don't like that stuff. I definitely love the debut album. It was the later period of the band or the albums that came after that that didn't do a whole lot for me. But ever since they've reformed, I've really, really enjoyed their stuff. This one here hasn't quite you know, grown on me as much. The opening track, Heavy as the Ocean, doesn't really do it for me. It doesn't sound like a Bush song. But once we get into the second track and going forward, it does sound like Bush on here. And uh, the first single that came off of this, More Than Machines, very good track. If you like that, I think you will like the rest of the album. So cool stuff there. All right, this one came out a few weeks back, but was having trouble getting it. And ultimately, um, Amazon couldn't deliver it, so I had to order it used. Well, not used, but through a marketplace uh, dealer. It did come brand new when I opened it. Dogs D'Amour, uh, sometimes referred to as Tyla's Dogs D'Amour. And uh, this is uh, Tree Bridge Cross. Odd title, don't really know what that means. What, I think it would have sounded better if it was Tree Cross Bridge, but who knows, Tree Bridge Cross cross and uh 10 tracks on this thing here cool thing is it's a double disc and the first one being the all new studio songs on here and the second disc has nine of those done acoustically so you get an electric version of the album and you get an acoustic edition of the album as well tyler always known for giving his fans uh, more bang for their buck he does that quite often doing both an electric and acoustic edition of the album and then this one here uh, came out digitally a few weeks back. No word that it was gonna have a CD release at the time. Glad that it actually got one. And a very underrated band, Bangalore Choir. And this one here called Beyond Target. So their album called um, On Target, the one and only album that they put out, I think it was 1992. Lead vocalist on is David Reese who was part of Accept, he came in and filled in for Udo. And then the rest of the guys that are on this, all coming from various other, you know, glam metal projects and things of that nature. So kind of a little bit of a super group at the time, but David Reese, the most famous of them. One of the best, most underrated glam metal albums, Bangalore Choir on Target. So this has the demos from that period. It's got the songs from that album, and then it's got a whole bunch of other stuff as well. And what's kind of cool is the first disc on here is essentially that first album, but in different mix. But it's also dropped one song and added three other tracks, and it's in a different running order. So you get a different feel to it. And then the second disc on here has a bunch of unreleased songs that weren't part of that, kicks off with five of them, and then it runs into a bunch of demo songs from the uh, debut album that's on here. All of it sounding really good. Uh, the first disc has much better, higher production level than the second disc, but the second disc is totally listenable. There's only a couple minute moments where you hear a little bit of volume up and down or, you know, in terms of the tape, because it probably was an old tape, but it was so minor, not enough to even bother me, somebody who actually uh, oftentimes has issue with very minor, you know, distractions and things like that in its music. So I was very happy with that and very glad to get it on a CD format. And look, it came with this, a postcard signed by David Reese. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's the album cover. And bigger version of it there for uh, the original on target edition, which is back in print, by the way, if you wanna check out the original edition of that. All right, then I picked up some other stuff, uh, local record stores and so forth. Um, then uh, Hurricane, Slave to the Thrill, 1990 studio album featuring uh, Kelly Hansen, who went on to, to front Foreigner. We've also got Doug Aldridge in the lineup who'd go on to uh, play with White Snake and Dead Daisies and Dio and just a whole host of other bands coming from Lion. So 
If you're a Doug Aldridge fan, great album. Plus, this is the original uncensored album cover of it, which is why I picked it up. For those of you that had tuned into uh, the record store meetup, this was the thing that I picked up that day. Didn't show it in the video, uh, the wrap-up video that I did at the end with Anthony. I wasn't thinking I would have uh, included it there to let you guys know, but uh, that was what I picked up during my visit and my little bit of shopping that I was able to do. Uh, then I also picked up uh, this on a different day, uh, Billion Dollar Babies Battle Axe. Uh, this here has the original album, the demos, and the one and only live recording. I think, in fact, they only played four live shows before breaking up. But Billion Dollar Babies features three members from the Alice Cooper group. It's got Michael Bruce, Dennis Dunaway, and Neil Smith, the original Alice Cooper group. And so this album here was what they were going to record as the follow-up album to Muscle of Love, but Alice Cooper never returned. He stayed solo. And so the band themselves formed this group, Billion Dollar Babies, and went out and did this. In fact, Michael Bruce is actually doing the vocals on here, handling guitar and vocals, and then they just got a keyboard player and another guitar player on here. Really, really good album. This one here sourced from the original tapes and is remastered. If you know about the 2001 version that was on Burning Airlines Records and has a green cover to it, that one was sourced from a vinyl, so it was not the original tapes. It was also not authorized, or at least so I'm led to believe by things I've read. This one here, authorized edition and sourced from the original tapes, which in my opinion does have better sound than that original one. And then um, a little bit of uh, about a week ago, I was really into some alternative rock bands and stuff and went and picked up a bunch of stuff related to that. So I got some Urge Overkill, Exit the Dragon, good stuff. You might remember them from having a song in the Pulp Fiction movie, did a cover of the Neil Diamond classic, Girl, You'll Be a Woman Soon. Uh, they also had their own hit, Sister Havana, off of the previous album, Saturation. This was the follow-up, really good stuff best of the Pixies, mainly because Pixies had a brand new album that came out last week, Doggerel. That one really blew me away from last week. Just lots of good stuff coming out lately. And I picked up the first of the reunion era albums from the Pixies, uh, Indie Cindy. So that was cool. And I picked up the last Breeders album that I did not own. This one here was called um, Mountain Battles. And so I thought this was pretty cool here. Uh, both this one and this one had kind of interesting packagings. So when we open this up here, the booklet for this is a long, thin style booklet that is like this, that when opening it has uh, interesting little pictures and things. No information or anything, but just some cool photographs, but it is done long and thin and the sort of portrait style and the way that it uh, slides in, I thought was kind of cool. And then we've got this one, the Pixies, which opens this way and then it opens like that. But then we've got these things that fold up this way and also this one. So again, pretty cool. And their little booklet, which is a different one here. And it is done like that. And it's an accordion style that then just undoes itself. And that's got lyrics and things of that nature on both sides. No pictures on this one, but um, yeah, pretty cool nonetheless. So that was uh, nice there. And yeah, that's the stuff that I picked up, those 13 CDs. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And certainly if you're interested in either one of those full reviews for Queensryche or The Cult, check the description. Uh, worth checking out if you want to know more about each of those bands in that album. Hope everyone has a good day. Take care and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.